वेलकम ऑल टू ई पी जी पाठशाला एम डॉक्टर ऋतु खोसला असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पोलिटिकल साइंस एम सी एम डी आई वी कॉलेज फॉर वुमेन चंडीगढ़ द टॉपिक डेट आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू टूडे इज जे एस मिल एंड टी एच ग्रीन द रिफॉर्मिस लिबरल्स टूवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी द इंडिविजुअलिज्म वॉज स्टेडिली अबैंडन इन फेवर ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग स्टेट कंट्रोल द रीजन बिहाइंड दिस वॉज दैट इट वॉज एबल टू अनचेक द ग्रोइंग प्रॉब्लम्स विच वर क्रिएटेड बाई कैपिटलिज्म these problems included the massive increase in the poverty the exploitation of the proletariat class by the bourgeoisie accumulation of wealth in the hands of the few and so on so in the midst of all these historical changes it became very difficult for the liberals to prove the viewpoint that the industrial capitalism will be able to create prosperity and it will generate more liberty among the people or it will be able to safeguard the liberty of the people so amidst all these a new stand of political thought emerged in the 19th century called the reformist liberals these reformist liberals include t h green j s mill hobson hobhouse john rawls and so on the objectives of the module are to understand the ideas of j s mill and t h green that made them different from the earlier liberals John Stuart Mill popularly known as J.S. Mill. J.S. Mill's political ideas at times were quite in consonance with classical liberalism and even at times with libertarianism especially those tilted towards socialism thus making him stand between classical liberalism and socialism. Such views of Mill make him a reform liberalist. He was opposed to collectivist tendencies and traditions as based on 19th century principles but along with that he laid emphasis on the quality of individual life safeguarding individuality and talked about the causes such as female suffrage and women cooperatives Now the important aspect of JS Mill's work was that he made a revision of utilitarian philosophy J.S. Mill advocated the liberal ideas as found in the works of Bentham and James Mill. He called himself utilitarian, but his ideas were reformed as from what he was advocated by Bentham. Bentham's formula only admitted quantitative basis of evaluating pleasure and pain, but Mill's more sympathetic ideas as well as intellect forced him to recognize the flaws of the falsific calculus and thus made changes in Bentham's philosophy. For Mill, some pleasures are high and superior to others even though in terms of pleasure they are equal. While Bentham held the view that quantity of pleasure being equal, that is pushpin is as good as poetry. Mill stated that there are qualitative differences in pleasures and thus believed that the greatness happiness does not lie in the continual satisfaction of one desire after the another rather it is found in the development of individual thus for mill a happy life is a moral and intellectual life and not merely the one filled with moments of pleasure of senses among all the notions given by js mill his views on liberty are most significant In his work on liberty published in 1859 Mill's arguments clearly makes him the contributor of modern liberalism in this work Mill strongly campaigns for individual liberty he argued that the only purpose for which power can be rightly exercised over any member of civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others this implies that mill favored only minimal restrictions on the individual that too were with the purpose to prevent him to harm others in the words of mill the sole end for which mankind was warranted individually or collectively in interfering with the liberty of action of any of their member is self protection the above stated view by mill paved way for the foundation of his liberty principle or harm principle mill further stated over himself over his body and mind the individual is sovereign thus he draws a distinction between self regarding and other regarding actions of the individual self regarding functions are those over which the individual has absolute freedom but if his actions in any manner affects others they become other regarding actions and a check can be put on them by the state or society so far as the consequences of an individual's act affect him only the government has no right to intervene in his matter it is only the core of laws of state or conventions of society to oblige a man to be prudent temperate or self-respecting 
Mill claimed that interference on the part of the state in matters of opinion and moral conduct restrains the innocent forms of enjoyment. Mill also asserted that an opinion which political authority or social convention seeks to discredit often turns out to be true and that even though events might prove it to be partially or wholly false, society would suffer from suppression of it. Mill further defined the sphere of human liberty that includes inward domain of consciousness, freedom of thought and feeling, freedom to form opinion, freedom of taste and persuades, and right of freedom to unite for any purpose which does not harm others. Mill advocated freedom for individuals for the highest and harmonious development of his powers. Thus, for Mill, liberty was a positive ideal whose end was not the greatest happiness, rather development of human personality. Mill also maintained that individuals are free to hold public opinion. In his words, if all mankind minus one were of one opinion and only one person were of the contrary opinion, mankind would no more be justified in silencing that one person than he, if he had the power, would be justified in silencing the mankind. Justifying his claim, Mill said that if the opinion is true, then by suppressing it, humanity is deprived of truth and will not progress. Similarly, if the opinion is false, then humanity loses again because if the opinion is not true, then it will be shown in the similar manner. But its expression is useful as it forces us to restate the reasons for our beliefs. Mill thus advocated heavily competition of idea. He believed that only within a free market of ideas, truth would surface as the bad ideas would be replaced by the good ones and ignorance will be banished. Mill stood for the free debate, contest and argument as all these led to social progress. He however found that all this to be threatened by democracy which believes in the notion that majority is always right. Mill opined that even the governments, majorities and the social aristocrats are not infallible as even they can be wrong. Mill's doctrine of liberty is however applicable only to human beings who are mature in their opinion and feelings and not to the children or young people below a certain age. He also denied the extension of this doctrine to backward people or races which are not justiciable. Mill goes to the extent of justifying despotism as a form of government for these people. Mill thus by imposing such restrictions of certain categories of people advocated inequality among men. This is so because some men were likely to emerge as superior to others. Another reform made by Mill from the other liberals was with regard to his views on state. While the classical liberalist stood against the interference of the state in individual's life, Mill laid emphasis on the positive character of state. He believed that state interference in some regards is indispensable if the individual wants to develop his personality. He held the opinion that development of individual personality is the goal of the government and for this it performs moral functions. Also, the constitution of the state should be made with the aim to stimulate the best intellectual and moral qualities of the citizens. Mill, however, reminds those who are willing to repress the individual liberty for the sake of a strong state that the worth of the state is no more than the worth of its individual citizens. Further, Mill regarded the state as a product of will rather than of an interest. He advocates that the sentiment of loyalty which prevails among the members of a community can be described in terms of the sentiments generated by past experience that had extended over a long period and not in terms of utility. Mill states that one person with a belief is a social power equal to 99 who have only interests. Following this, Mill advocated that the best form of government would be the one which would promote virtue and intelligence of the people and this is possible under representative government. But the Mill's notion of representative government was not applicable to the backward or the colonial people. In his work, namely, Considerations on Representative Government, written in 1859, Mill argues, free institutions are next to impossible in a country made up of different nationalities. Mill also warned against leaving the choice of governors in the hands of ignorant people and discriminating masses that would lead to collective mediocrity. 
To avoid this, he suggested few reforms to have a truly representative government. These include the system of proportionate representation, to have adequate representation of the minorities in the parliament, educational and property qualifications for the right to vote, and the system of plural voting, that is numerical weightage of votes according to individuals' intelligence and education. Unlike Bentham, Mill rejected the idea of secret voting or voting by ballot and stood for public voting. Another contribution made by Mill was his advocacy on rights of women. Mill stood for the extension of civil rights for all the classes including the women. He was unhappy by the inhumane treatment given to the women by the government and society. Mill in his work on the subjection of women proposed that society should be organized on the basis of reason and not on the grounds of accident of birth like sex. Women thus should be entitled to the rights and the liberties which men enjoy, especially the right to vote. Mill advocated the cause of women's rights both inside as well as outside the parliament. Another major diversion seen in the ideas of Mill as compared to his fellow liberals was his views on property and wealth. Earlier Mill opposed socialism but later after in-depth study of it he saw virtues in it and thus started appreciating the scene though he was opposed to the extreme form of socialism. Unlike the classical liberals like Adam Smith who advocated lesser sphere, Mill in his work Chapters on Socialism published in 1879 condemned the enslavement of majority population to poverty as an evil equal to almost any of those against which mankind may have hitherto struggled. Under such circumstances, he suggested the adaption or adjustment of ideas of poverty to the improvement of human affairs. Mill also proposed a text to reinstate slowly to society the values it had created. In his words, the first step should be valuation of all land in the country. The present value of land should be exempted from the tax, but after an interval has elapsed, during which society has increased in its population and capital, a rough estimate might be made of the spontaneous increase which has accrued to rent since the valuation was made, and tax should be laid on this increase in value. Presenting such views, Mill sounded more of a socialist, but despite of his socialist tendencies, he remained attached to individualism and tried to combine political liberalism with economic socialism. Now, another political thinker that we are going to discuss now is Thomas Hill Green, popularly known as T.H. Green. T.H. Green, a 19th century political philosopher and a social theorist, took a diversion from early liberal thought and through his works and writings inspired many new generation liberals. As a teacher of philosophy, he highlighted the then persistent ethical and political problems of his community through his writings. Now, first dealing his, with his ideas on human nature, the ideas of Green have been labeled under the notion of social liberalism. Unlike the classical liberalism, he did not consider individuals as self-seeking creatures trying to maximize their profits. Rather, Green presented a more optimistic view of human nature. He considered human beings as a self-conscious creature that makes him different from animals. Individuals have sympathy for one another and thus they are concerned for the welfare and interests of another. Green believed that people are not merely concerned about themselves, rather they possess a sense of social responsibility which tie them together. Such a view of human nature by Green makes him a reform liberal. Green made a complete departure from utilitarianism. Instead of talking about pleasure and pain view of human nature, he argued for individual's moral development. Green rejected the idea of utilitarians that the moral value of an act can be calculated by its tendency to produce maximum pleasure for the greatest number. Instead, Green advocated the measurement is the tendency to contribute to perfection of mankind. Though Green accepted that the doctrine of utilitarianism had been of great value in Europe as it improved the standard of social action by insisting on taking into greatest number whose highest good is to be taken into account. But nevertheless, Green maintained that the doctrine is theoretically invalid and would lose its practical value if logically carried out. He pointed that deciding action on the basis of calculating pleasure and pain would act as an obstacle in the path of social progress. 
whereas if a person is governed by a sense of moral obligation then possibility is that he would ignore the question of pleasure for himself or for others and would seek satisfaction in some art or science that cannot be calculated in terms of pleasure or pain by any number of people further green also denounced the doctrine of natural rights as propounded by the social contractualist the idea that human beings are born with certain inalienable rights green denied that there are any right prior to or independent of society for him those rights for man are natural that are essential for the accomplishment of his vocation as a rational and a moral being rights that crop up due to moral necessity are natural not because they are available in the state of nature but because their need is based on teleology or purpose rights are provided to man so that he may utilize them for social good in the words of green i quote natural rights are rights which should be enjoyed by a normally rational and moral man living in a rationally constituted society they belong only to men capable of being influenced by the idea of common good and are effective only in a society whose members recognize a common good as contributing their own ideal good they are the conditions under which rationalization of moral capacity of a man is made possible green further stated that as rights are natural in its character so they are recognized by society and these are ideal rights green also makes a mention of actual rights which according to him are given by the state but the rights on which green emphasizes are tilted to morality than on laws Now further green also challenged the negative concept of liberty as propounded by the classical liberalists green regarded freedom as the greatest of all the blessings and a necessary condition for the overall growth of an individual it is a condition under which individual is able to know his potential gain skills and knowledge but his concept of liberty was not negative that stands for leaving individual alone contentment of one's own desires or acting as per one's own wish in place of negative freedom green proposed positive freedom which he defines as the capacity of doing or enjoying something worth doing or enjoying in common with the others green believed that every man aims at self perfection which is only possible if he contributes to the welfare of others furthermore such self perfection can only be attained in society also in a society freedom expands when its members develop their power by contributing to social good thus freedom for green is a positive power to do what is to be done The above view of green also implies that social disadvantage social evils and inequalities can act as a threat of the freedom to the individual This in turn demands an enabling role of the state to play in order to expand the freedom of people thus the minimal state as propounded by the classical liberals was replaced by an active state performing more social and economic responsibilities Furthermore just like Hegel green considered state as a divine idea and the embodiment of divine spirit but deviating from Hegel he did not assign state a purpose of its own while making a state as a source of rights green permitted individual to disobey state green says that one will never have the right to resist but one may have the right of resisting such a resistance will be right if the prevalent circumstances are not leading to moral development of individuals green altogether rejected the night watchman role of state moving one step ahead of mill green advocated that the role of the state is to create such an environment in which approximate equality can be generated under which all individuals would enjoy opportunity of health labor and education they would have freedom to choose and develop themselves as per their desire now green was also against the unchecked policy of laissez faire as propounded by classical liberals as it enhanced poverty and injustice in the state green believed that there can be circumstances in which individuals cannot choose reasonable ends without state interference to create an environment in which they could have their moral and intellectual development 
Unlike early liberals who believed that government could not enhance individual liberty by removing restrictions on freedom of contract, Green believed that government was enhancing individual liberty through the collectivist legislation of his day by adding restrictions upon freedom of contract. Green's views on poverty are also significant. He neither fully supported private property nor criticized it. Thus, his position was neither of an individualist nor of a socialist. He defended private property on the basis that it is vital for the development of individual's personality. He defined property as the sum of instruments required for the free play of self-realizing principle in man and contribution to the common good. Another implication from the above position of Green is that he defends inequality of property. This is so because if property is required for individuals on growth and for the social good, then it means that property ought to be unequal. Further, if man is free to think and work off for his own well-being, then it becomes difficult for him to limit his desire as he might be guided by his future well-being and of his coming generations. Mill, however, did not give unlimited right to acquisition of property. He condemned it on the ground that such a system permits few rich people to prosper as at the expense of the others. On the basis of this argument, he condemned the British system of landed property that was based on family settlements. Okay friends, after studying the thoughts of T.H. Green and J.S. Mill, let us conclude our topic. Now talking about the views of J.S. Mill, the views given by him was neither coherent nor they were consistent. Rather they were mid-path in the thought of transition. Moreover, J.S. Mill was able to make an empath impression on the minds of the people. Secondly, the reform proposals which were given by Mark, it was a big contribution to the political thinking. And the biggest contribution which was made by J.S. Mill was his freedom, was his thoughts on the freedom of speech and expression. Now talking about T.H. Crin, T.H. Crin neither totally diverted from the liberalism nor he was a totally socialistic. The reason being he did not abandon the ideas of liberalism altogether. Though he talked about the reforms in the economic activities, he gave the proposals regarding that. However, he advocated strongly the idea of private property. Moreover, the reforms which were he advocated in Britain related to law, related to labor and education, they showed their impact later on in the, in the government policies. So if you say T.H. Crin and J.S. Mill, they were able to arise consciousness among people. Thank you.